हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस वीडियो हियर वी आर विद चैप्टर थ्री ऑफ माइक्रोवेव इंजीनियरिंग अ फैमिली ऑफ माइक्रोवेव ट्यूब्स वेयर वी हैव द क्रॉस ओरिएंटेशन ऑफ द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड विच रिस्पेक्ट टू द इलेक्ट्रॉन बीम फोकस फ्रॉम कैथोड टू एनोल वी आर डीलिंग विद द वेरी पॉपुलर मैग्नेट्रॉन डिवाइस ऑफ सिलेंड्रिकल टाइप वी आर ऑलरेडी कवर्ड आफ्टर लुकिंग एट द वर्किंग ऑपरेशन एंड द वेरी पॉपुलर पाए मोड ऑफ ऑसिलेशन वी हैव सॉल्व टू प्रॉब्लम बेस्ड ऑन टू इट ऑल्सो now let us see another type of the magnetron that is linear so here we start with our topic linear magnetron as in the previous topic cylindrical magnetron the shape of the cathode and the anode both the electrodes that are very very essential was to be of cylinder shape so this is not the case in the current magnetron as we have the title linear magnetron the cylinders are not there there is quite linear orientation of the anode and the cathode so let us see the diagram here so here we see the diagram so at the bottom here we have the one electrode that is very important it is cathode and it is provided the heating element and now it is negatively charged because of this particular negatively charged cathode there it will be the production of the free electrons let us say on to the surface of this cathode body and here on to the upper side here we show the anode body the anode body is made up with certain cavities inside so here we can number 1 2 3 4 and 5 total five cavities are shown inside the anode body and because of the anode to be of positive potential and cathode to be of negative potential there it will be the electric field developed the direction that we can show in the diagram from cathode to anode it will be e bar vector here but as this is the linear magnetron for the magnetron along with the electric field there it is the presence of the magnetic field the magnetic field will be perpendicular to the orientation of the electric field so here we show the existence of magnetic field with the help of magnetic flux density denoted as b sub is 0 and as it will be perpendicular to the plane of the paper here we show a cross sign here circled now inside the anode there are five cavities that we have shown and while the device is operated the positive negative positive negative positive negative successive polarities will be formed on to the adjacent sides of the cavities so therefore from positive polarity there it will be the outgoing lines that will be the path of the electrons and from negative the lines will be terminated on to the negative parts we want the device to be operated as such that the adjustment with respect to the anode to cathode potential mostly denoted as anode potential v0 and the magnetic flux density b0 should be as such that the electron will be following a cycloidal path so it will be generated on to the cathode it will not go to the anode directly it will follow a cycloidal path and it will be coming back to the cathode body itself so it will be having a repeated path followed by the electron here so this will be the linear magnetron so as the cycloidal path for the electron it will be we shall be taking the help of the electron motion equations that we have already covered into the first chapter so here the electron motion equations will be with respect to the electric field and the crossed orientation magnetic field here so here we initially consider that the electric field is oriented along the positive x component here whereas we have the magnetic flux density that is oriented towards the positive z direction so with respect to these pre assumptions we have the three motion equations the first motion equation can be given as we have d2x by dt square is equal to minus it will be e by m ratio in multiplication to the bracket where we have capital ex added with capital pz into dy by dt 
So let us say this is equation number one. So in this equation, on to the left hand side, you find that d2x by dt square. So simply, if x is the measure of distance, distance covered by time, we call it is velocity. So simply, dx by dt, it will be the velocity of the electron into the positive x direction. When we have one more differential onto it, so d2x by dt square, it will become acceleration of the electron into the positive x direction. So that is computed in terms of the charge over the electron divided by mass of the electron, the x component of the electric field between cathode anode terminal, bz is the magnetic flux density oriented along the positive z direction and the electron velocity that is having the direction of y here, so dy by dt. So this is the first equation of motion of electron. Similarly, the second equation can be given with respect to the acceleration for y component here. Therefore, we denote it as d2y by dt square. So it is given as E by m into bz component in multiplication to dx by dt, the velocity. So let us name it by equation number two. And for the z component, here we shall be having d2z by dt square. So as we know that the electric field is oriented along the positive x direction, magnetic field is oriented along the positive z direction. So the z component for the electron to move is not possible. So therefore d2z by dt square is equal to zero. Let us say this is equation number three. So in these three equations, there it is the role of E by M ratio. So the charge of the electron and mass of the electron are the constant values. Therefore, E by M is also a constant. The value can be given as 1.759 into 10 raised to power 11 C by kg into the SI units here. Now to determine the solutions of these three equations is not very, very simple. Very first of all, we shall be taking to make it possible to have integration for equation number two. So that will result into the new relation. So by taking integration, we can obtain dy by dt is equal to E by m bz component into x. So here we can name it the next equation number four. Now here we can consider the case of space charge effect to be very, very negligible the cathode potential to be zero, the anode potential denoted by capital V zero. So in that case, we can have the relation for the differential electric field denoted as dV by dx is equal to V zero anode potential divided by D. So let this be equation number five, where small d is the spacing between the anode and the cathode or small d is the straight distance between the cathode to anode terminal here. Now, V0 is the anode potential, D is the spacing. Therefore, we can have the substitution of equation number phi into the equation number one, the first electron motion equation. Therefore, the new relation can be given here, that is D2x divided by dt square is equal to, we have, E by M in the bracket capital V0 divided by D, we have substituted minus BZ component into dy by dt. So let us say this is equation number six. Now we can make a combination of equation number four and the recently obtained equation number six. So this will result into the new relation D2X by dt square added with E by M times bz component to be squared into x minus e by m into anode potential v0 by the spacing between the electrodes d here. So this will be equal to 0. Let this be equation number 7. Next equation, it will be for the y here. So it will be in terms of capital V0 divided by bz component omega c into d in the bracket here we have omega c into t minus sine of omega c t here. 
so this will be the next equation 9 and the last equation will be simply z equal to 0 so this is equation number 10 here so this way the solutions of the first three equations for motion of electron can be given in terms of x y and z here in these equations we have denoted omega suffix c so omega suffix c is actually the cyclotron angular frequency and it can be given in terms of e by m in multiplication to the magnetic flux density bz component so from omega suffix c we can also have the denotion of f suffix c here and here in this case it can be the value of 2.8 into 10 to the power 6 into bz component in terms of hertz so e by m as they are constants we can determine the value of fc here so this formulation of fc can be very much helpful in determination of the values while practicing the problems now to operate the linear magnetron as oscillator we want that the magnetic flux density vz and the electric field developed that will be between the cathode and anode be so adjusted that the electron should not end onto the anode body it should just follow a cycloidal path and the condition can be that electron will be generated onto the cathode it will be following the cycloidal path it will just graze the anode and come back to the cathode position so this condition with respect to this to be the positive x direction this to be the positive y direction bz direction here it is perpendicular that we have already shown to this particular situation so the condition can be given in terms of the equation here so here the condition will be the maximum distance the electron can move far from the cathode in cycloidal path so it will be equal to twice capital v0 into m divided by bz square into e into d so this will be equal to d here so let us say this is equation number 11 so to see the situation into the diagram as well as this particular equation number 11 we can have one constant denoted as capital k so capital k can be in terms of d square into bz square divided by v0 it will be simply twice m divided by e and the value it will be having 1.14 into 10 to the power minus 11 so let this will be the equation number 12 and we can make the use of capital k so capital k as it is having the constant value we can make the situations that when the capital k is less than the value 1.14 into 10 to the power minus 11 so that time it will be striking the anode so if we get back to the diagram here the electron will not be back to the cathode for that particular condition electron will hit the anode from the generated at the place cathode here now at the another situation if the k value is larger than 1.14 into 10 to the power minus 11 so that time it will not reach to the anode it will just graze the anode and come back to the cathode position which is the desired condition of operation for the linear magnetron so this thing to occur inside the linear magnetron to look at the previous equation number 11 we can write the Hull's cutoff potential for the linear magnetron denoted by capital V suffix 0 C and it will be in terms of 1 by 2 into e by m into b0 square into d square so b0 is the generalized magnetic flux density we have shown so hull's cutoff potential we have denoted that i outline here and give the new equation number let us say this is equation number 13 here so as we have the hull's cutoff potential here we can also express the equation in terms of hull's cutoff magnetic flux density provided the potential is at constant so it will be given in terms of capital b0 c here computed as 1 divided by d in multiplication to the square root having twice m by e into capital v0 so this is also to be outlined here 
So let us see this is new equation, equation number 14. So for the equation number 13, we can take the condition capital V when put less than V0C for the fixed value of magnetic flux density capital B sub x0, the electrons will not reach the anode. Whereas for equation number 14, if you put the condition capital B sub x0, the magnetic flux density when kept greater than this Hull's cutoff magnetic flux density B sub x0 C for the fixed value of the anode potential V0, the electrons will not reach the anode. Now we shall be deriving the Hartree condition for the linear magnetron. So let us consider a simplified diagram here. We can call this to be the linear model for the magnetron here. Now the condition is called as Hartree condition. So in this Hartree condition, we have assumed that the electron which is generated onto the cathode will be having a spacing denoted as small h. So small h is called as hub thickness. So the electron beam lies into this particular hub thickness. Small d is the distance of separation from cathode to that of the anode here. So with these particular assumptions that there it will be the electric field into the positive x direction, the magnetic field into the positive z direction, we can consider the electron motion into the positive y direction given by we can write the equation v sub x y I write it will be minus E x divided by B0. So it will be equal to 1 upon capital B0 given as dv by dx here. So here in this diagram we assume this to be the positive x direction, this to be the positive y direction and z direction is perpendicular to it denoted for B0 here. So let us say this is equation number 1. The capital V is showing just the potential there. Now we can have equation number 2 to be expressed because of the principle of conversion of energy. Therefore, the left hand side I write in terms of the kinetic energy 1 by 2 times m into V y square. So it is mass of the electron and this is the velocity we have shown into the equation number 1. So this will be equal to the potential energy given as E into the potential capital V. So let us say this is equation number 2 here. Now here we can combine the previous equation number 1 with the equation number 2. Therefore, we can write dv by dx squared that is equal to twice into E into V divided by m in multiplication to B0 square. So let this will be equation number 3. Now the differential equation we have obtained into this equation number 3 we can make one the rearrangement and express it as m divided by twice e into capital B0. So this bracket is under square root hence I put the power 1 by 2. So it is in multiplication to dv divided by capital V is also under square root. So this is equal to dx. So let us say this is equation number 4. So obtaining dx onto the right hand side we can make integration to this equation. Now making integration to the previous equation, we can obtain the potential in the field. Therefore, the potential is denoted as capital V here and it can be computed as E into B0 square divided by twice M into it will be X square. So let us say this is equation number 5. Now the constant of integration that generally we obtain is removed here by taking the condition v will be equal to 0 at x value to be equal to 0. Now we can obtain the potential and the electric field at the hub surface that we have shown in the previous diagram. So the potential at hub surface can be denoted as v in bracket h. So h the distance parameter we have put here it will be equal to e divided by twice m 
into b0 square into h square. Let us say this is equation number 6 and the electric field component it will be ex component given as minus dv by dx. It will be equal to minus epsilon divided by m into b0 square into h here. So this will be the next equation number 7 here. Now from the equation number 7 we have expressed the electric field intensity component into the x direction here. From this equation we can get the value of the potential expressed. Therefore the potential can be denoted as v0 and it will be obtained by taking negation of the integral. The integral will be ranging from 0 to d over this ex component for the dx differential here. Therefore by the next step we make it to minus integral 0 to h we take up to the half surface. So it will be for ex dx and then we split it for half surface position to the position of the anode. So this will be again for ex into dx. Therefore the first term onto the RHS we can write it as v of h plus it will be having the second component e by m into b0 square into h in the bracket here we have d minus h so d is the upper limit and h is the lower limit finally we can have it to e by m b0 square h in the bracket d minus h by 2 here so this will be the potential so now from equation number 1 and equation number 7 we can express the electron velocity at the hub surface that is h here therefore we can write velocity in positive y direction v sub x y and here it is at the hub surface hence in the bracket we mention h here so this is equal to e by m in multiplication to v0 into h so let this it will be the next equation number 8 now for the synchronism into the device operation we want the velocities to be equated here so the electron velocity should be equal to the phase velocity here therefore we can have the relation here it will be omega divided by beta equal to e by m into b0 into h so this will be the equation number 9 here the electron velocity we have expressed here and the phase velocity we have also expressed in terms of omega divided by beta where beta is the phase shift constant here so i outline this particular condition which is very very essential for the operation of the device here now when the phase shift is selected to be of pi radians so pi mode of oscillations the popular condition we obtain here so at this particular situation we can also obtain the cutoff potential the cutoff potential can be expressed as here we write v suffix 0 h given as omega into here we have b0 into d divided by beta minus m divided by twice e here into omega square divided by beta square here so i outline this particular equation this is equation number 10 and this equation is called as Hartree tree anode voltage equation so this is obtained at the phase shift for the n mode of oscillations i give the suffix n here to the pi equal to of pi radians here so this was the Hartree tree condition so here we can observe that to calculate the Hartree anode potential it is dependent on to the small d which is the spacing between the two electrodes cathode and anode also it is dependent on to the magnetic flux density denoted by capital B sub x 0 here. So with this knowledge we conclude this particular topic by the next lecture we shall be solving two problems based on the linear magnetron alteration as oscillator here. I hope you get very good knowledge for the microwave engineering. For more information like this, you can subscribe to Ikeda channel. Thank you.